is one of the founding fathers of African literature, the winner of countless honors and awards, and the author of dozens of acclaimed essays and books, including the groundbreaking novel, Things Fall Apart, which celebrated its 50th anniversary last year. His works have been taught throughout the world, and he's a hero in his homeland of Nigeria. You are my brothers and sisters. I've been there way too long. This week on African Voices, the novelist, poet, and professor, Chinua Achebe. You think you are the greatest sufferer in the world. Do you know that both, that men are sometimes banished for life? Do you know that men sometimes lose all their yams and even their children? I had six wives once. I have none now except that young girl who knows not her right from her left. Do you know how many children I have buried? Children I begot in my youth and strength? 22. I did not hang myself, and I'm still alive. If you think you are the greatest sufferer in the world, ask my daughter, Akweni, how many twins she has born and thrown away. Have you not heard the song they sing when a woman dies? For whom is it well? For whom is it well? There is no one for whom it is well. Omakalonye, omakalonye, omakalonye de nama. Tucked away in a quiet town in upstate New York is where you'll find renowned author Chinua Achebe. He's been living and working as a professor here for nearly 20 years. It's a long way from his homeland, the Igbo region of Nigeria. I spent a day with him discussing family, books, and storytelling. I think storytelling was my life, was part of my life. I was very curious about stories. Um, so even attempting to remember the first one, I think it's like remembering the day you were born. I, I'm not sure uh, you can. It's so fitting. We're sitting in a library. It seemed to be one of your favorite places to be. Well, at that level, I was absolutely um, fascinated by books. By, 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 and, I, and I had a school that understood particularly uh, the value and the importance of books and, li and libraries. You were not expected, you were not allowed to read textbooks uh, after classes on a, on a number of days. The principal called it the, the textbook act, <laughs> which he passed. And you were forbidden to read, to pick up your geography or history. At this government college in Imohia, he read European classics like David Copperfield and Heart of Darkness, a work that he would in later years call racist. But as a child, he saw no harm. When you would read some of these books, you would side with the European characters or the white characters and not with the African characters. I find that hard to believe. Is that true? It's absolutely true. And uh, it, it's, it's not hard to believe. Uh, what it tells you is the power that stories have 
the power that writing has. I read a quote somewhere that says, the white man was good and reasonable and intelligent and courageous. The savages arrayed against them were sinister and stupid. I hated their guts. That's right. Now, that, that was uh, my uh, recollection, one of my re recollections of my encounter with English literature. They were depicted as um, definitely not European. <laughs> <laughs> they were in incapable of creating a civilization or sustaining one. Uh, so you saw them in a very bad light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this was very consistent. When I came to the age when I was able to draw a line uh, between a good story and a story that is contrived for a purpose, a story that puts me uh, in in the position of savage um, jumping up and down you know by the riverside you know, um, as having done nothing having created nothing of worth um, when I began to read at that depth which is not a depth for little kid children. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I then, it sort of dawned on you one morning that there is something behind this storytelling. Is part of your responsibility in your mind as a writer to accurately depict your people? Um, Yes, well, I think it's my um, ambition to distinguish between good novels and bad novels. I'm not talking about looking good. I'm talking about seeing a human being as human. What did your parents make of you wanting to be a writer? I wouldn't say there was any protest, but there wasn't any rejoicing either. <laughs> you see, I think um, I, I was lucky in, in the family I, I, I had and have. Uh, we don't impose on others. This is one great thing. With that sort of freedom, it, it allows you to, to pursue your true passions then, mm -hmm. which is rare. And I would argue in most Nigerian families, you're not encouraged to pursue your passions. No. No, that, um, especially if you describe it as passions. <laughs> <laughs> Were you born a writer? Coming up, Achebe tells us what makes writing worth it.